Hi and welcome to the Comfy Red Couch. My name is Tracy and I'm your host and today I have a bit of a co-host with Scout here. I'm not sure how long she'll stay but she does like to come up and have a little visit every once in a while. Sometimes she'll just lie behind me, other times you'll hear her clicking her feet on the floors around me but for now she's up here. It is a very grey day in Toronto today. It has cooled down considerably compared to the last few days to the point where I've had to put on a long sleeve sweater because there was a bit of a chill in the air this morning. I'm okay with that. The past few days it has been quite warm, beautifully sunny though, and I work in an unair conditioned space. I live in an unair conditioned space as well. So I don't mind it being a little bit on the cooler side, especially at nighttime makes it a lot easier for sleeping. I have a lot of things to share with you this week. I have a finished object that I can share with you. I have a an object that just came off the needles last week that I'm going to talk to you about because I cannot share it with you until tomorrow on Instagram and Ravelry, but I'll talk a little bit about it. And I have a new project that's gone on my needles. And I also have a new addiction that I am going to talk about as well. So lots to talk about and I'm excited to start talking about yarn and all those lovely things. But first let me tell you where you can find me. I am Tracy RR on Ravelry and I am Comfy Red Couch on Instagram. There is also a The Comfy Red Couch group in Ravelry if you'd like to come over and have a little chat or join the group. Then we've got a, a, a craft along, not a knit along, it's a craft along. I've just done knitting projects for it so far, but it is a full on royalty and romance craft along. And I'll talk about that a little bit later as well, because my finished object was done for the royalty and romance craft along. What else do I have to share? I think I'm going to go straight into tea time right now. So it is now tea time and it is now time to talk about my new addiction. Today on the podcast, I will be drinking Queen of Berries by Tea Palace, and this is a black tea, and it has little pieces of strawberry, black currant, and I believe raspberries as well, and just a nice fragrant black tea. And I'm drinking it a little bit differently than I normally do. And that is because this past week in the mail, I received a wonderful package from Bird and Blend including this cold brew tea filter. I am completely addicted to this. So right now I have my black tea. This is the first time I'm actually trying black tea in this. I've been trying all different teas since I think I got it either Wednesday or Thursday and they have been amazing. So I'm excited to see what the black tea tastes like. So I'll just swirl it around a little bit and the black tea is, it's been in here since last night and you just pop the lid off. It's like a wine bottle. I don't drink out of this, I just pour from it. And today I am drinking out of a very special container. This is my swell bottle that has Liberty fabric on it. And this was a gift that Greg gave me. And for today, I am just going to drink out of my Liberty container. I have been drinking cold brew tea, like it's been going out of style. It's been great because it has been so warm. I was thinking today this would be perfect, but it's cooled down, but I'm still going to drink cold tea today. I am absolutely loving my cold brew filter tea bottle and I just love that it's got this chill, steep, drink, repeat and I have been taking that advice and filling this up like there's no tomorrow using lots of tea which is good because I need to get through my tea stash and it's really simple to use, simple to clean. I do have to be a little bit careful with the glass. I have warned the boys in my house not to touch this because I did have it brought in from England. It was a little bit pricey so I want to make sure it is well cared for because I want to use it all summer. It is amazing. The tea that comes out of it is so tasty and then I just pour it in my swell bottle. I have taken it to work with me. 
I took it to the Purple Pearl with me yesterday and just even having it on my knitting table and drinking it as I'm knitting has been a very good thing. Getting some more liquid in me, even though it is still tea, um, it feels more like I'm drinking flavored water than tea, but it is just such a lovely, lovely treat. Along with that filter bottle, I also bought some different teas and I have been trying some of them out. These are ones I haven't tried yet, but I do have Strawberry Lemonade by Bird and Blend. And I'm looking forward to trying this as a cold brew, the Pineapple Mint. And I also have Blue Raspberry. I think one of my favorite teas now from Bird and Blend, and I really like this one hot, I have not tried it cold brewed, is Chocolate Digestives. And it is just so yummy. I ended up buying 250 gram bags of it because I really, really loved it. I also bought some matcha. I've never tried matcha, so I bought the little trial tins. They remind me of the tins that I have my Fripperies and Bibelo stitch markers in, so maybe I'll reuse to put some in. And I've got different types of matcha. So this is mermaid matcha, and there is chili kale matcha. There's five in here. So I have to figure out how to make them and then um, we'll try it. Ultraviolet matcha. This one is Swamp Thing matcha. And then I have apples and pear matcha. And they put a note on my receipt saying apples and pear matcha tastes amazing with apple juice. So I will have to try that. Anyway, that is something I thought what is all the fuss about about matcha? Hopefully I will see. Another tea that I also just had to try when I was buying the cold brew filter, I have put into one of my David's containers and I've just stuck this on here. This is mojiti, like a mojito. This is unbelievable. It smells amazing. It is green tea and you can see there are big citrus slices in there. So there's lemons, there's limes. It smells heavenly. There's mint in here. And this was the first cold brew, cold brew tea that I tried. It was phenomenal. So this is one I'm going to have to stock up a little bit more on because what an amazing tea from Bird and Blend. So next order I think I will be getting some more of this. But for now I am having some Queen of Berries in my lovely Liberty Swell. So I will, unlike my usual mug that I've got to share, I'm going to say cheers to a wonderful week ahead and bottoms up. I think it needs a little bit of lemon but otherwise pretty good. Before I move on to my favorite things, I just thought I would quickly update you with what I did tea-wise. I had quite a bit of this to drink and it was really quite nice, not bitter at all. I wish I'd put maybe a little bit of lemon in it or something just to give it a little bit more zing, but I do like black tea on its own, so it's quite nice. And I decided that I wanted to make a tea for this afternoon, a nice cold brew tea, so I cleaned out the filter, put in some Raspberry Mojito by David's, and this afternoon I will have a lovely pink tea with gorgeous little fruits floating around in the filter, and I'm looking forward to tasting that one from David's this afternoon. One thing, and finishing this one off of course, one thing I wanted to mention was I was looking to see if it was possible to get another filter like that, just in case I accidentally break it or just to see if maybe if I love it maybe having a second but that's a bit of an extravagance. I did find the same brand but it doesn't have the pretty designs that Bird and Blend have and it is 
by Hario, and this one's the red one. And this is Canadian Dollars, $26.99 at Bed Bath & Beyond. It's the Hario Filter and Bottle Wine Style Teapot in red. And the green one that they also have is, I guess, an olive green. It's $27.99. So I don't know why there's a dollar price difference when you buy it online. But if that was something you were interested in buying in North America, a little bit more of an if that was something you were wanting to buy in North America, a little bit more of an economical way to do it. Sometimes I trip over my tongue. Anyway, it is now time to move on to my favorite things, and I have lots of lovely things to share with you. But first, I'm going to tell you about what I did yesterday. And yesterday, I was able to take a workshop at the Purple Pearl, and it was a buttons and zippers workshop that Kate Atherley was teaching. And I always love taking classes with Kate Atherley when she's at the Purple Pearl. So I created a little button band with all different styles of buttons. And we talked about putting ribbons on closures for cardigans. And we also talked about putting zippers in place as well. So it was a 9.30 to 11.30 workshop. And then afterwards I just sat and knit for a while. But that is what I created while I was there. And I learned a lot of new things that I either didn't know before or hadn't tried in a very long time and I'm excited about using some skills that I learned to get some more garments onto and off of my needles. So definitely a worthwhile workshop. I always love taking workshops with Kate and just workshops in general are always such a great way to expand your repertoire and pick up some tips that maybe you didn't know and even if you did sort of know it to brush up on some of those old skills. So that is what I did yesterday. I was able to sign up on Friday night because I stopped by the Pearl to pick something up which I'm going to share with you in a few minutes and there was still space in the workshop so I decided you know what I'm going to take that workshop and yesterday while I was there I also signed up for a workshop that will be happening next Saturday and that is Kate Atherley again her custom socks workshop. So this will be my fifth sock workshop with Kate. And this one is to fit socks to my own feet, which just some more little tips and tricks are always a good thing to have. I really want to learn how to make socks for Nathaniel, who is eight, and sort of fitting for his feet, because as his feet grow, I'd like to make him socks but there aren't really a lot of patterns that I'm liking that are geared towards kids. So I've got some vanilla socks that I've done for myself. I would like to maybe be able to whip off some vanilla socks for him as well. Although he doesn't really like to wear socks all that much. So something, something that I would probably like to gear that workshop towards is more for making socks for Isaac, Nathaniel, Greg, and of course, me, because I'm the one who loves to wear my hand-knit socks. So that's always, I don't mind when it's cold out like it is today, because I can put my hand-knit socks on my feet. So that's not a bad thing. Next thing I am going to talk about, and I can't share with you yet, tomorrow, which is Monday, I'll have a photo probably on Instagram and definitely on my Ravelry page. It had been living in my fun Harry Potter bag that my sister-in-law gave me and it is now off the needles and these are the Sock Society socks that will be released tomorrow and Helen was talking about them on her podcast this week. She has used a colorway by Volen Vine called Tiptoe. I have used Nora George yarns and this is the Atelier colorway just a lovely cream with bits of pink and little spots of brown in there as well I even had a little spot of purple which when I got to it just made my heart sing so these are off the needles they are on my blockers I have to photograph them this afternoon and have them all ready so that will be the third pattern from the handmade sock society which will be released tomorrow which is June 4th and 
They are lovely socks. I had some challenges with the heel. This is a heel that I had never done before. And I have to say, if I never do that heel again, it will be too soon. Um, I had to do on both socks, pull it all the way back twice. The first time, I just, I don't know what I did wrong. Something just, it didn't work out as nicely as I would have liked. The second time, I think I did, I picked something up wrong and it threw me off a little bit later. <sighs> yes, not my best heel, but the rest of the sock looks great. So these will be coming out tomorrow and for now this bag will go into the bag drawer to be used for another special project at another time. So Friday afternoon, I had, at lunchtime, I had worked on the heel of that sock. I had turned it and at the very end realized I had done something wrong. And instead of going home and working on it, I did something a little bit crazy. I went to the Purple Pearl, I picked up a new skein of yarn and I cast on something completely different because why work on a heel that needs to be finished for a deadline that's coming up when you can cast on something brand new. And that is in my lovely rainbow bag by Jewels of So Sweet Violet. Such a lovely bag. And Friday was June 1st, which was the start of Pride Month. And I realized that I needed a gift for somebody. So that's sort of why I needed to get this cast on. And I need it fairly quickly. I actually should have it done for Tuesday, but I'm pretty sure I'm not going to have it done for Tuesday. I picked up a gorgeous skein of blue brick yarns and the red is now gone, but it is a rainbow ombre and this colorway is called Pride. And I have cast on another gorgeous pebble beach shawl because you can never go wrong with a pebble beach shawl. And I have gotten through the red. I am now into the, Roy, uh, the orange of the Roy G. Biv, so the rainbow. And finishing off the orange, I'll get to the yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. And there's my Roy G. Biv. This pattern, and I've said it before, I will say it again, I have never seen a Pebble Beach that I haven't liked. I think this has got to be one of the most versatile patterns. It goes with all yarns. Now, I'm doing the small because the yardage, I had 500 yards for this skein. The small calls for about 400 meters, which is about 437 yards. I want to use my entire skein of rainbow yarn, or at least as much as I can. So I'm going to do some extra repeats at the end. I was looking through some Ravelry pages for people who had used a rainbow yarn and they had a couple of hints also for expanding. I've also changed it up a little bit in the past to make it fit the amount of yarn that I had, shortage or a little bit extra. So. I'll be modifying a little bit, but I am loving how this is coming out. The one thing I have found with the red yarn is that as I've been knitting, I knit Continental, I've been getting little red spots on my fingers. So just I've got a little tiny bit of red under my fingernail. I had a little bit of red across my indent from holding yarn too much yarn um, and I mentioned this yesterday when I was at my workshop and Kate said make sure you put some vinegar in the soak when you are blocking so I will make sure to put some vinegar in so that I don't have a ball of red pride because I want all of the rainbow colors to come out beautifully not all rouged up so that will be coming off the needles hopefully sometime this week I think what I will have to do, the person that I'm going to be gifting this to is coming in on Tuesday and I will show her what I have so far. I really want to share this on the podcast next week before I gift it. So 
hopefully she'll be able to pop in at another time to pick it up once it's all blocked and gorgeous and ready to go but at least I'll have it to show her and say this is what I'm making you as a gift and can you come pick it up later so I can show it on my podcast please is that too much to ask anyway um loving the colors and I was just so excited to get to the orange there is this amazing bluey green right in there that I cannot wait to get to it's like an aqua I love that green and there's not too much yellow I can I can bear with that yellow but I will tell you between the orange and the green I'm gonna be looking forward to the green so that is what I cast on on Friday instead of working on the heel of my handmade sock society socks like I should have been doing so that is something that surprise cast on but a really great way to celebrate pride month with some rainbow yarn and I know that Jules of So Sweet Violet and Amy of formerly Little Tailoress, now Dandelion and Dogwood. Dogwood and Dandelion. I think I worked this out last week and then I forgot. Dandelion and Dogwood, I believe. Um, oh, I'm going to have to look it up again. Dandelion and Dogwood. Why I keep forgetting, I don't know. So next time I forget, you'll need to remind me. D-A, dandelion, comes before D-O, dogwood. It's an alphabetical thing. <sighs> oh well. Anyway, what I wanted to say about Amy and Jules is that they are going to be hosting a rainbow along coming up soon. I was kind of hoping it was going to start on June 1st so that I could have this in here. My original thought for their rainbow along was to do an on the spice marker, market with some yarn that I have put aside and I've had put aside for a couple of years. So that will be my selfish knit, but I needed to do a rainbow along as a gift and a perfect way to start off Pride Month with Pride yarn and a gorgeous, gorgeous rainbow bag. I cannot wait to see what it looks like off the needle. Okay, the next thing I am going to talk about has been living in my Fringe Supply Company bag. This is my waxed bag. And I shared a little bit of this last week. This was last week's last Saturday cast on. And this is another Jordan sweater. I wore my Jordan sweater on the podcast last week. It was a pink one. This one is a gorgeous beige. And I've caught my needle in the lace. And it is knitting up fairly nicely. Greg did pick up some more Quince & Co. Sparrow for me, but there's a little bit of a problem in that the dye lots are just, oh, just a little bit different. So I was trying to figure out how I was going to do this. And one of my thoughts was to rip this all out and do the large size instead of the extra large. And what I probably should do is put this all on a piece of waste yarn and try it on because as I'm looking at it, I'm thinking it is going to be quite roomy. And this is a pattern that you don't really want it to be too flowy. It is nice with a little bit of negative ease. So I may see what that looks like and then I should be able to do it in a large with three skeins. Or my other solution, because who really wants to rip out this much work, especially if it fits okay, is to fade the two dye lots. So once I get past the next feathery lace section, so there's a feathery lace section, then an arrow section, and then another feathery lace, and then the final top part is another arrow section. So between the feathery lace and the top arrow section, I thought I would start to fade out these two dye lots. So get a little bit of striping. And then I do have two skeins of the song in Quince and Co. Sparrow. And I could then do the shoulders in this color. And then of course, because I had faded it up it would sort of be a little bit of a darker beige on the bottom 
and lighter at the top. So I think that's probably what I will do if I'm happy with the sizing. If I'm not happy with the sizing, I'm going to go down to a large because there's four extra repeats, I think, on the extra large than there are on the large. So I think three skeins would do it just like it did with the pink that I had used with the raspberry of the Fibra Natura, not whatever, I can't even remember, which is probably a good thing, the brand I was talking about last week. It was the Fibra Natura that I had used. I won't even go back because otherwise I'll get in that mental block. But I am liking the Quince and Co. But I'm not quite sure what to do about the dialogue. At this point, my main goal is to get my new pebble bleach off the needles though, so that's the important thing to do. I'm not going to talk about my other sweater, which is for my Royalty and Romance craft along because, again, I didn't touch it this week. Sometimes that's the way it goes. So priorities, rainbow shawl, and then I can sort of switch back and forth between the two sweaters. The next thing that I am going to share with you had been living in my gorgeous London bag by Christine. And Chris and her daughter Sam have created a wonderful prize for our royalty and romance craft along. There's still two more weeks left in the craft along. And Christine has made a gorgeous London inspired, royalty inspired project bag. Her daughter Sam has created a beautiful skein of hand dyed yarn called Date Night and there is a fun Megan and Harry tea towel in that prize pack as well. I love it and I will tell you I think Lorraine loves it too because Lorraine is now working on her third project so she created a project bag, which I thought was brilliant for a craft along because of course we all love our project bags. So she created a project bag. She's now working on a pair of socks and she's also got a shawl on the go. So Lorraine, you really, really want this prize, I know. And I know Nancy has knit up a beautiful pair of socks as well. So there are some finished objects going in that finished object thread and I must have lost my mind this week or I probably actually lost my glasses because I thought I was in the chatter thread and started chattering away and then it was pointed out to me that I had been commenting in my no chatter please thread. So fully guilty, lost my mind, lost my glasses. I need to be able to read those headlines a little bit better. <sighs> so I had to delete a bunch of my own chatter posts because I was completely clueless. Anyway, I am going to share with you my first royalty and romance craft along craft and it is a knitting Thing. And I realized something interesting about it last night that I hadn't realized before. So this is the Shawl Society Season 3 First Shawl and it is called the Maytham Shawl. And I used Once Upon a Corgi, not Copper Corgi like I said last week. So Once Upon a Corgi and I realized the Queen has Corgis. Why did I not connect this until last night? So I used the gorgeous color Hedwig, and this is in the Isaac base, which is a 100% Polworth yarn, and it is so, so lovely. Off-white with little brown and black specks, and there's even little bits of a gorgeous pink in here too. This is the first skein that I started with and then I used my second skein as the bottom part. I had just a little bit more than my finger to finger which you can't see right now because there's not enough space in my iPad, iPod. And I did not have much yarn left after I finished casting off so I was whew that I didn't have to work this into my bind off but 
that was all I had left of my main color. This is all I had left of my contrasting color, and this is called Palace of Dreams. So this was the way I linked it to royalty and romance, and my shawl. Oh, I love it. I got it all blocked on Tuesday night, and no, I got it blocked on Monday night, and then Tuesday I went and got my hair cut and I came home after my hair was cut and took the shawl, I had to still weave in my ends, wove my ends in, took the shawl out into the backyard and I have a piece of lattice on, I, I'm in a semi-detached house so the next door neighbor has a bit of an addition so when you walk out my back door their addition is there and there is some lattice on that addition which makes it a little bit prettier and I often block my shawl, or not block, I often hang my shawls on there and take a photograph. And I don't know what was happening with the light that day. It was the magic hour. It was about seven o'clock. And my photographs came out without any filter on them, looking like they were sepia toned photographs. I just was blown away. So I am now going to share with you my Maytham shawl and make sure I've got it the correct way. And this is my gorgeous Maytham shawl. So headwig at the top, and then there is a band of Palace of Dreams, and then back to the original color of Hedwig. So let's open this up. Fully. It is a big, big shawl, but I love how it's turned out. And I have used the 100% Polworth here. This is an MCN yarn, which I forgot to mention when I was talking about my yarn. But look at the gorgeous architectural bits that Helen has designed into this pattern. So Palace of Dreams, yes. And this is the secret garden was the inspiration and I love this shawl. I don't think I will be gifting it to anybody. I think it's going to be mine, all mine. Oh, I love it. And I was so thrilled at how it photographed as well and just, I love it. So that is my finished object this week. The Shawl Society, I believe the next shawl will release the last Thursday of June. Oh, I saw a picture of the new one yesterday. It's very, very pretty. So I've got to figure out what yarn I'm going to use. And there will be, for the next six months, on the last Thursday of each month, another shawl release. So this was the first one, five more shawls to go in the Shawl Society. If you have not joined, this shawl here, oh, so worth it. I'm not always a huge fan of big, big shawls, but I am really loving this one. I didn't point out that there is an I-cord border all along, and then there is just a very basic um, find off done, just a um, knit to put it back on the left hand needle and then knit through the back loop, uh, knit through the back loops. So left hand needle. I'm very bad at my left and right. That's something you maybe don't know about me. If you ask me to turn right, I'm likely to turn left and vice versa. So I always have to do the L trick. I learned that in my 20s. It has been so useful. L, left. This is my left hand. So yes, I am very directionally challenged. I should not go on The Amazing Race. Anyway, this is the Maytham shawl. I am loving how my yarns have knit up together. I was a little bit leery about mixing two bases, but just, I love it. Anyway, that is 
all I've got to share this week on my favorite things. This week, the mailman only brought me one brown paper thing, and that was a big brown cardboard box filled with tea, and I've already shared that. So no yarn, no bags. It was a quiet week, and that was okay. So today, I thought I would share some Tracy's treasures with you, and today I'm going to share a couple of shawls that I have done, and I'm also going to talk a little bit about my bead stash. And for the most part, this is my bead stash and I keep it in this fun tin that used to have fudge in it, which I ate. And I do have a few containers, maybe about 10 more of these bead containers upstairs on the third floor. But for the most part, my beads are contained in this little container. And it's probably good that I haven't gone too crazy with the beads. A few of my favorites, I, I actually prefer the smaller beads than the larger ones. I like the 0.8s rather than the 0.6s, but it depends on the shawl, depends on the yarn you're using. But I really do like that smaller bead look. I know a lot of people like the bead, bigger ones because they add weight, but I just like that little tiny glimmer of shine. I do love these ones. These are a pearl style of glass beads. And I always think it's really important to have just a very, and I've got two of those. I'm going to share a couple of the other beads that I have in my stash. And these are all Toho's. For the most part, they are size eights because I like working with the smaller beads. And this is just a clear silver lined bead, which adds that little bit of sparkle. So that look that you're not expecting it, you go, oh, are there beads on that? Yes, there are. And I had done a peas blossom for my best friend and I had used Eden Cottage and it was Theseus Lace at the time. I, I think it's been renamed and I had used their steel colorway, so it was a very light gray silver color with the clear silver lined beads and it just looked spectacular and you just look and see the little bits of like having diamonds in there like on a platinum ring shank and then these gorgeous diamonds. So always a classic to have. Another one I like having for the warmth is the copper lined, clear copper lined. So similar just a little bit of warmth here and I love this one this one is a silver lined violet and I would love to use this on a bright green and the color I'm wanting to use it on is on something like that and I'll share this one in a moment but when I bought this that is what I had in mind. So something, I've got a, a skein of Sweet Georgia in a very bright greeny yellow, and that's what I want to use this on. And then my last one to share is this fun one, and it is a metallic. Again, Toho size eight, and this is metallic lavender, and I'm not sure what I'm going to use this on, but I just love how it reminds me of those little silver candy balls that you can buy to put on cakes. So these are four that are my favorites that I haven't figured out what I'm going to use them on. I have not been doing as much beaded shawls as I used to do, but I do love adding that little bit of shine. For the most part, my bead stash is quite small, which is good because it's very easy to go and just, oh, such shiny, shiny things. I do have a tiny, tiny size bead stash as well. And that is when I used to do cross stitch and I would put some beads on it every once in a while. And long, long ago when cameras used to have film and they used to come in a little tiny black snap container, you'd pop the lid off and that's where you'd store your film and 
I might still have some film stored in one of those from Isaac's first birthday that never got developed. Maybe I'm bad that way. Anyway, a long time ago when they used to have those little black containers, that's where I used to put my Mill Hill seed beads and they are so, so tiny. You need the skinniest needle possible, which is pretty close to impossible to thread, but I do have some Mill Hill seed beads for cross stitch up with my cross stitch patterns and um, they don't get used very often, but they are just the cutest little beads. So at least my bead collection isn't too out of control. Now I do have a couple of shawls that I wanted to share with you that I have done beading on and both of these designs are by Boo Knits and I did them a few years ago and they're both done on uh, using dye for yarn Tassa Silk Lace. So I haven't used lace as much as I used to but I do enjoy using it. So this is my Voodoo shawl and as you can see, I have put green beads on there, and I believe that's the Celadon colorway. Now, the interesting thing about this shawl was I ran out of beads, and when I went to a local bead store, they were actually out of the Celadon in the little green seed bead color. So at the very bottom, I was able to get the same colorway but a little bit of a different size and shape. So that is how I managed to fake that one. And I just love it though. And I really love on the purple how the green is. So this was the Voodoo Shawl. I believe it was a Halloween mystery knit along. And it's always fun just to wrap one of these around. I think it's really important to wear beaded shawls, even if it's just to work. I think that you've put so much work into it that it does not need to wait for a special occasion to wear a beaded shawl. So that is one of my beaded shawls that I did, one of my treasures. And my ring just caught it. And the next one I'm going to share with you is Morticia, also a Boon Knits pattern. And I love this colorway. It's not yellow, it's green, just so we're clear on that. Funny, I really don't love yellow, but this color green makes my heart sing. I love it, I could knit with it like it's going out of style. And if it's gone out of style, I don't care, I will still knit with it, I will still wear it. This is the Morticia shawl. And I had fun with this one because this was sort of a Halloween, I, I think it was a Halloween cast on that I did. And I used these darker beads. Now this is where I have used a size six Toho bead. And they are clear. They've got a little bit of shimmer, but of course it's not picking that up now. I don't think on the camera. They are a little bit bigger, so they add a little bit more weight and just that little bit of darkness to offset it. And I named this project Tinkerbell Visits the Haunted Mansion because this just reminds me of Tinkerbell and that bright green. And then I've got the dark beads in there and of course being Morticia and a Halloween design, I thought Tinkerbell Visits the Haunted Mansion. And again, this is one that I do like to wear and I will wear it to work, I will wear it when it's not necessarily a special occasion because wearing the Tussa silk with the beads is always a fun thing to do. So these are two of my treasures that get worn frequently. I do like how the dye for yarn Tussa silk blocks out. It looks like a dish rag before you soak it and block it, but once you get it on the wires, it looks beautiful, just so gorgeous. I haven't done a Boo Knits in a while. I have to tell you, I do not miss the Pico bind offs from a Boo Knits because a shawl this large with Picos basically every 
third stitch and little danglies. That is an epic bind off. <sighs> so, love this color. Love the silk. And with the beads, just that little extra bit of special. Now, that's all I have to share this week. I have, as I said, no brown paper packages, but I now have an empty porter bin. It's now time for some bits and bobs, and Scout has come up to join us for this segment where I talk about anything and everything, not necessarily knitting related. And this past week, it was busy as always. I did mention I am in an unair conditioned space, so I have a southern facing window. It gets warm in my office. I do have a window that opens, but when you open it, sometimes the wind blows papers around. Not always ideal. But I did make a couple of breakaways from the office this week. My coworkers and I went to Starbucks a couple of times, and that was a nice little breakaway. On Monday, I was supposed to go for my allergy shots, but unfortunately the nurse was sick. Although I kind of put my foot in it on Wednesday when I went to see her and I said, I was kind of glad you were sick on Monday. When it came out of my mouth, that didn't sound so good. I was not glad she was sick. I was just glad I didn't have to go and have stabbed arms. And also I needed to work late on Monday, so that worked out well, as well as I needed to get my shawl blocked for the Shawl Society. So even though I was not glad she was sick, I was glad she wasn't there on Monday. That was what I meant to say. On Tuesday, I did go and get my hair cut and that was lovely to just have some me time. And just, I'm very pleased with the length. I was able to straighten it on my own, even though of course the hairdresser always does a much better job than I ever will. <sighs> I need to make appointments more often for my hair, but I just, I just don't. Anyway, very thrilled with it. And we'll see when I get it cut next. I mean, the nice thing about having a podcast, you can sort of keep track of last time I had it cut, November. It's now June. Anyway, I did get that done. Wednesday, as I said, I did go to get my shots that time. And when I got home Wednesday night, I was super, super tired. I think on Wednesday and Thursday night, I was so tired, I didn't even knit. And that's just not normal. And that's when I know I'm getting tired. So I'm looking forward to vacation time coming up in a little bit. So in a few weeks, I will be off and I am definitely looking forward to some me time, lots of knitting, lots of quiet time, lots of cold brewed tea. Anyway, I think that's all I've got to share this week. Um, Nathaniel and Isaac didn't get up to much as far as, as far as I could see, and um, Greg, yeah, he's had a quiet week too, so we're all busy. We are looking forward to some time off in the next few weeks. And, but it's nice to have spring summer hair. Anyway, that's all I've got for bits and bobs this week. Thank you so much for joining me on the Comfy Red Couch this week. I always love having you. And I just realized I had a major faux pas in my intro. I forgot to say welcome to everybody to the podcast. I forgot to say, get your project bag, get your tea or coffee or cold drink, whatever it was you were drinking. For me, it was a cold drink. I guess I was just so excited about my cold brew. Slipped my mind. Anyway, I do hope that if you are a returning viewer that you had a wonderful time working on your project of choice. And you know I'm always glad to have you sit down with me. Hope you got a good spot on the couch. If you are a new viewer to the podcast, I hope that you enjoyed watching this episode. And welcome. I hope that I'll see you again. And my gosh, hopefully over the next week, I don't continue to lose my mind. Anyway, I am wishing you a wonderful week ahead filled with lots of crafty goodness lots of joy, lots of relaxation, lots of cold brew tea, and I look forward to seeing you next week on the Comfy Red Couch.
by and I also realized I just forgot to put my red blanket there. <sighs> Where has my mind gone? It's gone. Have a wonderful week. Bye.